Well, hey everyone and welcome back. My name is Jessica Likewise and I'm the CEO of Hope Education Services. I'm passionate about making videos to help parents that are affected by autism and autism professionals understand autism and ABA better. I get to partner with really amazing people to create exceptional videos to really help you understand some of the practical terms of ABA and how you can apply them, right? ABA stands for Applied Behavior Analysis, but sometimes in school, we learn all these technical terms and we never really apply what they mean to our practices and how we can help kids. So today I'm here with Dr. Keith Story. He's an awesome a mentor of mine and a friend of mine and he taught me about positive versus negative exemplars and so when I heard that I was thinking positive negative reinforcement and he just taught me something so cool that really changes everything for kids and I'm so excited to start using it in my own practice and he's here to share it with you so Dr. Keith Story thanks welcome back and let's talk a little bit today about positive and negative exemplars. So it's always great to be with you again, Jessica. So negative and positive exemplars or examples are you want to teach the student what you want them to do and what you don't want them to do so that they can make that distinction. And you generally want to start with a negative example and then another negative example and then a positive example. So this is from the book um, by Engelman and Carnine, Theory of Instruction, which is a great book and I highly recommend it. And I had a class with Ziggy Engelman during my doctor program, and he started out the class by teaching us what GLRM is. So nobody knew because GLRM is a made up word. So I'm going to teach you, Jessica, what GLRM is. So I'm going to start with a negative example, not GLRM, another negative example, not GLRM, and a positive example of what it is, GLRM. And then negative, not GLRM, not GLRM, not GLRM, not GLRM, 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 GLRM. Glurm, glurm, not glurm, not glurm, not glurm, not glurm, glurm. So what's glurm? So glurm is when you were holding your pen, right, like 90 degrees, and you were holding your pen up straight. Like exactly, that. exactly right. Perfect. But I started with a negative example, a negative example, and then a positive example. So that helps the learner to understand what that gray, you kind of get rid of that gray area between this is what it is and this is what it's not, so that they understand. So another example is many years ago, I had a student teacher who was teaching a student with a disability what one inch is. And it was trying all these different things and she just wasn't understanding it. So I said, point on the ruler just above one inch, say not one inch, point just below one inch, say not one inch, then point to exactly one inch and say one inch and then do more negative and positive exemplars. Within a minute or two, she understood what one inch was. So it's really helpful. For instance, this is a truck. This is not a truck. This is not a truck. Just different examples so that the learner understands, oh, this is what a truck is, and this is a car. A car is not a truck. This is a train. A train is not a truck. So you're providing information about what it is and what it's not. Another example is with social skills instruction. So you want to teach the learner, the child, what to do, but you also want to teach them that this is not an appropriate social skill. So for instance, if you're teaching greeting skills, you want to teach looking at the person is what you want to do. Looking up at the ceiling is not what you want to do. Looking down at your feet is not what you want to do. Looking at the person is what you want to do. So you're throwing in those negative and positive examples so the learner can understand, oh, this is what I should do and this is what I should not do. So then it becomes clearer because you're getting rid of those things that they don't maybe know, oh, I shouldn't look at the ceiling. It's okay to look at the ceiling. But now I understand it's not okay to look at the ceiling when I greet somebody. I should only look at their face when I greet them. So it's just getting rid of some of that gray area between what you should and should not do. So it's really helpful when you're teaching somebody a new skill to provide both negative and positive exemplars of what you want them to respond to. Yeah, that's really fascinating. I love this and I'm definitely going to start doing this right away. And I'll admit I've been doing ABA for 13 years and I've never heard this taught before and I've never incorporated this before. You know, one of the things that was coming up for me before I really fully understood you explaining it and because it was coming up for me, I wanted to ask you to address it. You know, for people that are afraid of, well, if I teach a child what not to do, you know, would they start intentionally doing the wrong thing for noncompliance? 
And, you know, are there behavioral kids that you would not use this for or situations you would not do this? So, for example, I'm thinking of one learner I have, and he is a great personality. He thinks he's really funny, and he is actually really funny most of the time. But I can imagine that if I told him, okay, well, you know, we're going to sit in the chair and that, you know, this is not how we sit in the chair. And, you know, this is not how we sit in the chair, but like this is how we sit in the chair, that he would find it really funny and maybe start practicing those responses we don't want because I've inadvertently taught him some ways to not sit in the chair. So do you think there are situations where it may not be advantageous to use this? And if Nothing so, works. Yeah, definitely works all the time, every situation. So for a learner like that, you may not want to use native examples because they would get off on them and just focus on that. Um, but you can always try it and see how the learner responds. And you can always tell them, look, we're going to do some funny things and we're going to do some not funny things. So we, you know, we need to take it seriously. And here's why I want you to learn this skill. And then they may understand better. Yeah. But if they're going to respond inappropriately, then you would not necessarily want to do it in that way. Yeah, but that makes a lot of sense. I love that. And I'm thinking right away now, I have a learner who's really struggling to sort, um, picture cards of different colors and I'm thinking right away I'm like wow this is a really great way to teach him to just find only the red cards in this pile if I show him like this is red this is not red this is not red this is not red this is red I'm thinking already wow this kid I, I know they're gonna get it as soon as I throw this in there um, so thank you so much um, Dr. Story for sharing that with us I it's always a privilege to have you come onto our channel I appreciate you I learn from you every single time and if you want to uh, and if you want to get Dr. Keith's book it's incredible um, he has so much value you have I believe over 40 years of experience he's a doctorate in special education a BCBAD um, which is more initials than I have after my name and I always love learning from you so if you want to share your book and we'll have a link to both the book you recommended earlier in this um, training as well as your book in the comments below and uh, tell us a bit about your book. Uh, well, the book is Systematic Instruction for Students and Adults with Disabilities and it covers basic teaching strategies, prompting, cueing, task analysis, reinforcement, and so on. So we've tried to make it as practical as possible for uh, people who are practitioners rather than writing for other academics. Awesome. Well, I would encourage everyone to check it out and also continue to check out our channel. Subscribe. We're going to put out more videos just like this one. There's also a ton of videos that we put out in the past or I put out in the past, um, including with some other amazing professionals. Last week, I just interviewed a developmental pediatrician explaining for parents really what to look out for and what to do if they think their child may be autistic. So there's a lot of great value on there. So check it out. If you're watching this on Facebook, you can just check out the YouTube channel by going to Get Autism answers.com. If you have a question, I will get it answered for you. I answer every single question that parents send in. If I can, I bring on someone who can. So just type your question in into the right into this the comment of this video. Let us know what it is and we'll make sure we get it answered. Thanks again, Dr. Keith, and thanks to everyone who watched the video.